So thanks a lot for for joining today. Uh, could you present yourself, Professor? Yes. Nicolini? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Davide Nicolini. I am a lecturer at Warwick Business School, where I uh, direct the PhD programs and a, the Icon Research Center. And I'm also one of the facilitators of the Process, Practice and Institutions Research Group. Okay, thank you. Um, I've read your recent paper in Organization Science, Attention Engagement as Practice. And I think it really suits well to the strategy as practice direction. So could you shortly summarize this paper? Yeah. So first of all, I want to remind that the paper has been written by two people, not one. So it's been written by myself, a Professor Maya Koritsa, <clears throat> who has shared more or less 50% of the responsibility and the merits. So I will use the word we, I don't want to appropriate the work. Okay. So I, I will speak on behalf of both today, but I want to be clear that this is a joint uh, collaboration. So the paper is in explorations of the practices that top manager in the NHS, in the National Health Service, managers of large hospitals use in order to uh, stay on top of the things that matter in their work. To our um, um, knowledge, this is one of the first applications of ethnographic study to the uh, analysis of attention practices. And that's one of the first time which people use the, the construct of practice in order to analyze this phenomenon that, as we explained in the paper, is usually uh, approached from a very rather cognitive um, um, or communicational perspective, including in the uh, activity-based view of the firm of ABV. So Maya and I um, shadowed for an extensive, very long period of time, almost one month each, seven chief executive, investigating how initially how they were using knowledge, how they use information, and then increasingly how they were paying attention. And the paper basically described what are the challenges that they actually encounter in their work. And we described the challenges in terms of volume of attention on demand, the fragmentations of the attention demands and the variety of attention demands. And then what we do is we describe the way in which some of the practices and associated materials that they use in order to address these particular challenges. And what we found basically three things that we call together the attention and infrastructure of the managers. So they use a number of manage, uh, man or practices to activate and regulate attention, which means there are things that help them to activate attention, so to pay attention for some things and not others, but also to filtering and triangulating attention so that they're not overwhelmed. Managers are always challenged, are always have to find a good compromise between too little and too much. Mm -hmm. um, attentions and the study is about how they do it. We know that they do it because all managers actually do manage. So the question is not whether they do it, but how they do it. So first of all is these practices of activating and regulating attentions that what we call is generating requisite attention. This is an expression that comes from the old cybernetics language of um, William Ross Ashby, they were saying that system need requisite variety in order to operate. So enough to match the environment, but not too much so that they are swamped. The second number of practices is how they focus their attention. So how do you keep attention to a number of staff at the same time? I think this is some of the most interesting finding, I think, of the study, in terms of the fact that this managed to survive by focusing attention and then distributing attention differently to meet short, mid and long term issues. And they use different practices and tricks. One of the, for example, one of the tricks that I think it's really universal because everybody who's read the paper mentioned is what we call attention segmentation. So they really try to segment uh, their working life into islands, into segments, into close segments to pay attention, a meeting, an encounter, an event. So they can pay attention before during, but then they don't have what we call attention spillover. So they have limited attention spillover. That's why manager want to conclude a meeting with some action stuff. So they literally can close this chapter of their attentions and move to something else. Because what its problem is that 
any attention a spillover, create noise for other events. And this is something that if you look, uh, if, you know, if you think about it, we all do. So, mm -hmm. you know, and it's very useful. And then the last things we said, they have also to, to find practices to prioritize attention, as I said, so how to escalate things. And this is a mix of balancing personal priorities. We always think of chief executive, the people who make a lot of decisions, but we actually found in our work that they are much more constrained than we thought. So personal agendas and agenda that come from the fact that they're also inside of institutions. So the paper is about how to respond to the three challenges and how to find the right balance. We think that this is what the ABV described as the attention and engagement of managers. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. So I think, as you said, it's something that not only top managers, but all of us um, um, are or have to do with, with with this paying attention to different things like for example if i think here we have a look at our smartphone there an email pops out and so on so one other question do you have something or do you discover something in the paper that would be beneficial for like all people in uh, right now the paper is in the traditions of interpretive studies so the question is you know uh, it, we can have a, a conversations, uh, be, this being the strategist practice groups, about what are our studies useful for. So the paper is inspired, is, is actually aimed at providing a sort of um, analytical framework for managers to actually, actually examine their own practices. So we have done this uh, with the same study in, uh, in MIT Sloan when we actually put forward the idea of, of a personal information infrastructure. We like the word infrastructure as well, but because this was the research was about. And in that particular paper, which is sort of like uh, a twin paper of this, although it has a different focus, we basically provide the, uh, the managers with a list of things that they can use in order to reflect on their practices. So in, in this case, it is, is, you know, do you use the right tools? Are the tools pointing in the right direction? Do you use the right practices? You know, so it's a it's a um, it's a framework not so much for giving suggestions, normative framework, or more a reflective framework. It's a number of questions that that uh, managers can help ask themselves. As I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. while we're writing this thing, we discovered a lot of these questions are questions that we can ask ourselves. And there are questions that are simply basic, but it actually can have far-reaching um, consequences. For example, one of the things that we found is that the challenges of managing is that in the moment, they need to be seen to pay full attention to whatever they do. And the mm -hmm. higher you go into the echelons, the more important this can be. So even if a, a manager, a CEO has accepted to go in the meeting that for him or her is absolutely inconsequential, she cannot um, mm -hmm. afford to not pay full attention in the moment and to show to be paid attention. So that's a challenge because these managers go through a dozens of events every day and that's why the segmentation comes in. But for a manager, it's very important to know, to mm -hmm. ask themselves, you know, am I taking up too many meetings? Am I paying full attention in the meetings? Do I have the tools and the triangulations and the filtering so that I can actually show to pay attention? Because the one thing you don't want to do as a CEO, go in a place and then showing to be distracted, so to be inattentive, forgetting things. And great managers, great leaders, so to speak, are also those who add this sort of like personalization things, which sometimes means remembering names, sort of you know, showing that they have done their homework, which, which is, is a way of adding value to the things. So these are questions that we, our paper allows us managers to, to, uh, um, to ask themselves. As, as I said, we have already published different versions uh, and it's been used it is used actually the framework you know it's been used to uh, to help manage in executive teaching because we have received some twitter pictures of, of <laughs> great and we have used it as well so the, and this is as i said is an example of how some of the strategies practice and practice studies in general can be used directly by by practitioners to improve their practice mm -hmm. so as in a series of analytical categories to understand better what they do already this Mm -hmm. Great, R really, really interesting. And what inspired you to write this this paper? This... So first of all, as I said, um, as, as people may know, I, my um, 
uh, the radical agenda, my research agenda, and also my uh, uh, agenda is to uh, just to use the, uh, the affordances of pra the practice approach in order to illuminate a uh, different aspect of organizational life. So what um, um, inspired us to write this was to see how using a practice approach can actually tell us things that other um, views have not allowed us to see. The paper is in fact, um, complementary to the traditional ABV, uh, which is of course based on Simon work. So it's based very much on, on the communication on pipes and fluid transitions, so to speak. So, so what we do, we bring to bear um, um, the, the, the affordances of a practice approach. So we can see things that other people couldn't see. Uh, we all see the same things because we are, we are observing the, the, the things that manager to So um, what inspires us to do these things is that, as I said, um, we, this is the result of a research that we did, uh, um, funded research on helping managers to improve the way in which they use information knowledge in their work. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so obviously we were, we were interested from the beginning to pursue this goal. The focus on attention actually uh, emerged quite late into the analysis. And this is, I think, a very interesting story of, for, for some of the younger colleagues. Is I would say it started after uh, we submitted the paper. So very often when you submit the paper, you still have a very um, uh, unfocused contribution. And if you find, as we happen to, to do, a very good um, um, uh, editor, some good reviewers, they help us see. We knew we had the sense that we had something new, but we couldn't give it a name. So we knew it was all there all along, but we couldn't give it a name. So we were trying to find the name for these things. And they pointed out we were really talking about attention. I say this because once they told us you're really talking about attention, we had to go back to all our data mm -hmm. and recode from scratch. So we, 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 did, we, we wrote this paper twice. The second times, once we actually nailed down, we understood. So this is one million words, okay? So this is seven cases of one month, 130,000. So we count them, okay? So, so this is a, a, a cautionary tale for some of our colleagues that in some qualitative cases, you will have to do the work twice. It's painful, mm -hmm. it makes you cry, but uh, this is the result. And I have to say that uh, with a hindsight, the paper is much better than it would have ever been having, having not done this thing. So your question was when, you know, what inspired us to write this paper? We mm -hmm. had a general agenda at the beginning, but actually the focus on attention, as I said, emerged as it happens in qualitative research during the reflections and reanalysis of the stuff. Mm -hmm. Really interesting, really interesting. And if you're looking forward, so you are one of the, I, I believe one of the first scholars that applied the ABB to the 30 years practice um, approach. So how do you think can 30 years practice research in future benefit from your paper and the ABB approach? Okay, so, um, so I don't know how the, the study practice can benefit from the ABV. Those are questions for the ABV. So, but uh, I think that first of all, attention is a very worth topic, and as I said, it's very attention is very important. But we know very little about how people pay attention uh, in in real life situations. So. We were not, of course, not the first people to to use observational methods to uh, study attention. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of studies, and actually, most companies like Facebook and Google have um, a lot of of people observing what people do in front of the screen. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is a, a gap in the literature between psychological analysis of how we are capture inside screens, which is what the the uh, you know the attention economy is about. And then this macro discussion about the tension economy. So in between, there is this all quite uh, empty space of how people uh, pay attention in their daily life in mundane situation. Okay, so when you cross the road, okay, when you when you are you know when you are dealing with customers, when you are inspecting um, you know um, uh, a, a work site, I work in in in, uh, in a construction. I work on safety for a long time. So, okay, safety is all about like, paying attention. Of all this, we, we know very little. So that is the place where strategist practice and practice studies in general can fill a void, which as 
I suggested before, can have quite an impact on the work on, on practitioners through this providing language to speak about the practice, which is what practice-based studies at their best can do. Um, it can also, in the process, it can also integrate the attention-based view of the firm, which is, of course, mostly at the strategic level. Mm -hmm. right? So we can fill up the gap. I mean, everybody pays attention to the organization. So I think it's there's a, a complementary uh, work here. Mm -hmm. Great. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. I think it's really, really interesting and a really interesting paper to read. Um, uh, as you said, um, also because I'm coming more from a psychologist direction, I've studied psychology, and so I was uh, really interested in that paper because, like you know, the laboratory studies and so on, I know them from my studies, and so I think it's really cool to see how, how, how the concepts are used in practice. So the yeah. one thing that I wanted to say is that this is a, a this is a space opening paper. So you know, thinking backwards, there are a million things I would have done differently. In fact, I am start, I have already applied for um, um, some further project in order to expand mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff. Um, so I want to be clear that this is not a paper that that uh, concludes or or settles the. Um, the topic is actually just an opening, it's an invitation. So, I mean, this is an empty space. So this wasn't a, a, an attempt to say something significant or something relevant, because that's what you have to do in the paper. But it was also a, um, a placeholder. It was also a, a way of opening a new area. And by my hope, as, as I said, the paper itself can be accused of a lot of things. For example, we still use a lot of psychological language, as you noticed, but mm -hmm. we needed that in order to speak to the community. Mm -hmm. okay, so you can get, you can move away of something that people don't recognize. So that's something that we, we will do differently. We will also uh, probably uh, think in terms of very other types of methodologies to use. We use shadowing. So mm -hmm. that we saw, we saw certain things, not others. So there are a, there is a, 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 a large variety of opportunities that were, was, that opens up when we think that attention is, is something that we do every day with things and with others, rather than something that we do just mentally. So I'm trying to say that this paper is above all an invitation to others to occupy this space and to bring to bear the, you know, the tools and the sensitive that we have into this topic. That is, as you said, it's been, you know, um, it's been the, one of the specific area of psychology. I mean, James, there's a whole chapter on attention. <laughs> the principles, <laughs> this is 150 years ago. Mm. But it's a space that needs to be filled up. So uh, the invitation is to everybody else who's listening to this to just jump in. Uh, because as I said, not only it's interesting, but it's also extremely relevant. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I think that was the perfect concluding remarks. So Professor Nicolini, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah.